cow, that's the most scary thing I've ever seen in my entire life! And then, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And then I start talking. That's how I'll introduce the video and it'll be a nice little teaser even though I don't actually say that in the video. It'll be great. Alas, I am back. Welcome everybody to Say Movie Night Kevin. Spooky night. And boy has it been a long time since I released a video. In fact, uh, it's it's not been long enough because I still haven't learned not to turn on the smoke machine. Kevin, where have you been? I see that you have all, well, no, I can't. I can't see anything because you, you sprayed smoke everywhere. <laughs> I see you still have all of your ornaments left over from the Christmas episode, which is the last episode that you put up on your channel, Kevin. Where have you been, Kevin? Uh, I've been working on a TV show, actually. So I've been working for the last year, pouring pretty much all of my creative energy and time and effort as the lead editor on a TV show called A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay. And it's a lovely, sweet, cute kids TV show that is airing on the Daily Wire's kids platform. I'm so honored that I've gotten the opportunity to be a part of the show. You can check out the first two episodes for free. I'd love to hear what you guys think because uh, it's it's a big portion of my life dedicated to working on this show. It's for preschoolers, so uh, most of you who watch my show probably, hopefully, aren't the target audience for the show. It's not a show that um, is gonna have a lot of blood and guts and gore because personally, I don't think that that's the type of thing that's uh, good for kids, but um, we're not here to talk about a fun, cute, interesting, lovely, TV program. We're actually here to talk about a show that doesn't mind having a lot of blood and guts and gore in their kids show. And that is of course the 10th, yes, I said that right, the very 10th episode of Donkey Ollie. In the last few years, we have had Sound of Freedom, God's Not Dead 4, a Left Behind movie starring Kevin Sorbo. Those things weren't enough to bring me back, but an extremely obscure kids show about an ugly looking donkey. Of course I had to come back for Donkey Ali, let's do it. Hello everybody! From what I remember, Donkey Ali was in Egypt, ended up in a chariot race. We finally finished that story arc. It was done, it was over, they made it home, everything was fine, in the middle of the episode, and then a new, basically new season started is what it felt like. I think that there was some singing angels. Oh, I remember, Donkey Ali's brothers had decided that they were going to join a gang because the gang offered freedom and they apparently were slaves even though Donkey Ali was free. So I think Donkey Ali had uh, enslaved his brothers. That's what I remember. Let's see if I'm right, right now, as we get into the episode. Let's go. Hi boys and girls. Do you ever find yourself being disappointed by a friend or relative because, well, they just didn't act as nice as they should? Hmm, no, I've never had a cousin throw me into a well. <laughs> Though I did have a cousin once steal my candy apple when on a hayride, so that's, I guess, similar. Welcome to my life. I could go on about my brothers, but I think Mr. Narrator could say it better. I've never heard Mr. Narrator say anything better. Thanks, Ollie. Last time... Here we go! The recap! Ollie's brothers have been talking to a gang of wild donkeys. We need you to bring us three bags of food from your barn. Sure, we'll do it. That night, Farmer John falls fast asleep and doesn't even notice that the three donkeys are leaving his farm, carrying the three full bags of grain, which he was going to use on his spring planting. Uh, hum -ba -da -ba -da -da. <laughs> oh, oh, my grain! My grain! My donkeys! <laughs> My green! My donkeys! Hmm? Hmm. Well, off to see Jehu and Abner. Wow, they really moved on from that quick. That was quite the shift in tone. Well, off to see Jehu and Abner. Well, off to see Jehu and Abner. As Farmer John and his wife get close to Jehu's house, Listen! They can hear the merriment and frolicking as Elizabeth and Abner celebrate the birth of Micah, their third child. Another great child is born today. So Jehu, our hero of the show, and his wife are having a baby. And based on the level of reverence that Donkey Ali seems to have for Jehu's child, it would seem he thinks that a new Christ has been born this day. It's just as good, if not better, than Jesus. Ah. 
boing, 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 boing. Boy, it's another baby that looks as ugly as us. You don't want a baby to go wrong. The world's a better place because of this baby. Well, everybody seems to be enjoying Donkey Ali's crappy song until he starts getting into the weird stuff. Ah! <laughs> this is just a word of advice. If you're looking at a new baby that's born, don't start bringing up later life events. Wow, what a beautiful newborn. Oh, thank you. I bet he's gonna grow up to be handsome one day. Oh, thanks, yes, yeah, he's very cute. I bet he's gonna find a smoking hot babe and get married one day. Huh? They're gonna have so many kids. Get out of my house! Who are you? And then they'll die, they'll go off to the great beyond. Jehu, could you get your depressing donkey out of here? This isn't what parents want to hear. I don't think. And as if things hadn't gotten depressing enough, here comes Farmer John and his wife. Father, welcome. It's great to see you. And you too, Mom. Welcome, Father. Children, it's so good to see all of you. And you, Wally. I'm so sorry. I have bad news. It can't be all that bad. And Rupert's here too. I saw Esau and Jeremy left and took all of my seeds with them. I saw Esau and Jeremy selling seashells by the seashore. That doesn't sound like all these brothers. Are you sure? I mean, yeah, sure. One time they tried to murder me by throwing me down a well, but <laughs> they wouldn't steal seed. I never told them this was going to be my last year for farming. This is my last crop of seed. I was going to build them a big running area full of grass. Mm. With Just when you think you know your friends. They let you down. They left without so much as a trace. Everything is gone. Well, they've crossed over the line of right and wrong. Then Jehu gets really serious about this. It's time to put a price on their head and bring them in. They deserve the death penalty. We will find them and slit their throats. We'll be eating donkey tonight, boys. But Ollie steps in and says, I would rather not murder my brothers over this, over a little bit of seed. I'd rather sing. I know what they did is wrong. I'm not making any excuses for them. But maybe if I could find them, I could talk them into turning themselves in. I'll go with you. I'm sure we can find them if we look together. And now it's time for another song for some reason. If we look together. I have to imagine, and this is coming from somebody who's never written a musical ever in my life, and I don't plan on it. I have to believe there is some sort of methodology, some sort of intentionality behind song placement. Probably dealing with the story, probably having something to do with the emotion that the writer wants the audience to feel, sharing what the character is thinking or feeling in that moment. And I would go as far as to say that I think the makers of this show I uh, don't know that methodology. I think they just take a dart and throw it at the script, then say, well, we'll write a song about that. We can change for Well, this song is boring. It starts off singing about how uh, they can work together to find Donkey Ali's brothers. And then um, it gets a little darker, I think. We can Wait, what? Where are you going? Hold on. <laughs> if we work together, we, work we can together, drink we the Kool-Aid. We can find a path find together path beyond the stars. stars. Hold on, stars. Ollie, I don't think I'm interested in uh so We're gonna make gonna a suicide, make suicide pact together. together. And it will make everything better. Listen to those Donkey Ollie harmonies. If we work together, I think we'll win. So inspired by this incredible song, Jehu decides to put his thirst for blood on hold for now. Okay, we will give you guys one week to bring them back in. After that, we're going to send out a posse. And we're going to kill them. Ollie and Rupert load up on sesame seeds, carrots, and water <laughs> for their journey out into the wilderness. They didn't have the faintest idea of where to find Esau, Isa, and Jeremy. They were a couple of idiots. But they knew they had to keep searching. Otherwise, Jehu would send out his wrath on his brothers. And after searching all day long, 
they decide to camp in an abandoned olive grove at the foot of the Hebron Mountains. They're so specific sometimes. We've been looking all day. I know, I've been here the whole time. Why don't we stop and spend the night right here? Okay, it's getting too dark for me to see anyway. Now it's time for them to get attacked by bats like they're playing a game of Breath of the Wild. Sorry, no, Tears of the Kingdom. That's what I think it's called. Why don't we... Ah! Kill him! Catch him! Turn him into dubious food! Oh no! They're gonna get COVID! Bloop! Oh good, they fly off. That was really close! Close, it looks like they got Ollie. I think he's gonna need to be tested for rabies for sure. Some campsite you picked! next to a vampire cave. <laughs> Maybe next time you should use a little wisdom and look around. You're the one that's up there so high. You should have been able to spot them. Uh-oh, seems like there's a little trouble in paradise. Hey, look, this is silly arguing. We're safe. Ah. They must have left and gone to look for a meal somewhere else. But then they forgive each other. Let's settle down for the night. <laughs> Let's snuggle a little bit, please. But. Maybe Rupert and Donkey Ali aren't the only two who are having a little trouble finding happiness. Donkey Ali's brothers are learning that joining Antifa may not be such a utopian experience. We don't usually eat dry food. Farmer John always fed us carrots. Never had a carrot? I've had carrots. It's been a long, long time since I ate any carrots. You mean your hideout doesn't have carrots or oats? I didn't realize this episode was gonna have so much carrot talk. Wild donkeys don't know how to farm. All we ever did was work for people who did know how. This is a bit of mixed messaging, is it not? Uh, I'm not sure I even agree with the messaging here. I think I brought this up last time. I was saying that if we lived in a world where donkeys were sentient, basically humans, I mean, donkeys here in this world, they can talk, they can reason, they can um, survive on their own, then freedom, of course, is the option. They should be free. Obviously in our world, donkeys aren't that way. It's dangerous to just let them run free, but they're talking as if though they're joining some sort of revolution where they're going to free themselves. They're going to liberate themselves from the farmer's grasp. So now they're saying, yeah, well, freedom's all right, but uh, there's no carrots, you know, because with our master, our slave master, we got nice food. We were fed well and we were treated well and and that's the important thing. But that's obviously not the important thing when it comes to freedom for beings that have the ability to choose freedom if they so desire. Uh, so I'm not gonna go any deeper into that metaphor, but I do wanna say that I think that I disagree uh, with the messaging here. Is there something you're not telling us? Yeah. You know, it sounds so great, like life is gonna be wonderful. Are you saying it's not? Better than being in a glue pot or having your hide <laughs> tanned. Still, things are a little rough. No human telling you what to do? What about that? Yeah, but but no humans to love you either. Well, that's when this gang member Donkey lays it out straight for Donkey Ali's brothers. Come on, get real. You're a dead donkey when they know you steal. Couldn't we just- Go back? Uh, no way. That's why Sinbad and Longfellow had you steal from Farmer John. He knew they'd put a posse out on you. That's how he's kept everyone loyal to him. If you ever cross him, why, he'll just make sure you get caught at the scene of a robbery and take the brunt for the whole thing. That's when he tells them a little story about a little donkey named Spooker. That's what happened to my friend Spooker. He was another young donkey like myself, only he spoke up. Said he didn't want to do any more robbing. Well, the next time we went on a raid, he didn't come back. Sinbad told me they locked him in a stall. Really? They just left him? Yeah, with a price on his head. What was the price? I'm actually looking to buy a donkey, but I'm not actually sure what a fair price for one is, so. Whip up! Oh. Bring those three fellas with you. We'll travel by the light of the moon. Oh yeah, I feel a song coming on. A spookery song! Travel by the light of the moon. In the day we'll sleep. I think this song is sung by the guy who sang Monster Mash. Down on unsuspecting bottles, drinking everything is fine. Wake up in the morning, they will all be crying. We'll travel, 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 we
Ow! The moon! You gotta start traveling by the light of the moon. If you don't do it, then you better do it soon. If you don't run away, they're gonna get you with their posse someday. Travel by the light of the moon. Meanwhile, Ollie continued to search with Rupert for signs of his brothers. Finally, one day they climbed- One day? How long have they been out here? Decided to stay up late to see if they could find them running through the valley below. But they couldn't, and they starved to death. Ollie, can you hear it? Hear what? I can barely keep my eyes open. Over there, silly! It's them! Listen! Those are the only donkeys that exist! You're right! Come on, let's go! Ali and Rupert head down the hill towards the valley where the donkey gang is busy stealing supplies from one of the unsuspecting valley farmers, Jonah Marood. What they don't know is that in the middle of the farm, Jonah has dug a pit with a false floor just waiting for- My goodness, this is convoluted. And while they are busy carting off food, he is hoping they come a little closer. Now, son, you put the carrots around the edge of the pit like I asked you, didn't you? Yes, father. I put over three bushels of them. All right, you did do the thing that the only thing that we're here to do, right? That's a good boy. Boy, something sure smells good around here. I know. I've smelled that smell before. Well, it's coming from over there. It's coming from my butt. <laughs> it smells like. Uh... Sinbad said to stay away from the house. Some people are really light sleepers. They could have a rope over your neck before you know it. <laughs> Why is this show so morbid? It's fine, we're traveling by the light of the moon. There they are, Rupert. I'm gonna catch them. It looks like they're going to steal those carrots. Not the carrots! I'll see if I can spot an escape route! So Rupert flies up while Donkey Ali goes to try to save his brothers from stealing the carrots. But unfortunately, things go awry. And once again, Donkey is trapped in a net. <laughs> Cut him down, son. <laughs> Let's skin him alive, son. I've got this one tied up. Okay, all the way. Yeah, end of the bar. The Rupert comes back like 10 hours later. Ollie, where are you? Ollie. Well, golly, Ollie. I better just head back and tell Jehu what happened. What? Why would you leave, Rupert? Rupert's an idiot. Serves them right for getting caught. Willow was getting awfully careless. Yeah, shouldn't we go back and try and rescue them? What for? <laughs> They're just another four mouths to feed. Besides, if we did, we'd have to split the spoils. If that was his logic, then why would he invite them to be in his gang anyway? They didn't bring back spoils. I have to imagine they're stealing more than they're consuming, which is the whole point of getting more people involved in the whole gang. So I'm, I'm starting to question his logic. Back at the farm, the farmer and his son decide what to do with the donkey thieves. Dad, the Romans are looking for animals for the Gladiator Coliseum. Why don't we sell them in Caesarea? You gotta look out. If your kids are suggesting sending animals into the Coliseum, that's the sign of a serial killer right there. You gotta, you got a real Dexter on your hands. Well, that's a little harsh, son. Dad, these animals are bad. They don't deserve any better. Didn't you always say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? They were stealing. They deserve what's coming to them. And I want to see it. I want blood, Dad. I want blood. Okay, son. If you think it's best to sell them to the Gladiator Circus, make the arrangement. I'm sorry. Did you just say Gladiator Circus? My goodness. I'm extremely excited about the future of this show. Little did Ali know he was being sold to the Roman Gladiator Circus, where grazing animals were put in the ring with wild animals who tormented and devoured them. Had he known, he would have been even more uncomfortable. I would have to say, me too. If I didn't know that I was going to be thrown into a gladiatorial arena, I would feel more comfortable than if I did know that information. I left some food here for them. I don't want to see you starving these poor animals. You've Ooh, I would never, I would never. You silly goose. Don't worry. They'll be fattened up for the circus. It'll be quite exciting to see them in the ring with the lions and the hyenas. <laughs> <laughs> See where your bad deeds have gotten us? <laughs> I was only trying to help you get out of here. I wish you'd sing me a song, Donkey Ollie, and that would really help me understand. And now I'm being shipped to the Coliseum to be in the rings with the hyenas and lions. Eaten alive! I'm sorry, really I am. Please forgive me, Donkey Ali. Please. They painted such a good picture of what it was going to be like being free. I can see now, it was all a lie. Freedom is a bad idea. That's when Donkey Ali sings a lovely song, letting us know how bad freedom truly is. Good. Good. <laughs> Obviously, freedom in the uh, physical sense. 
that's a good thing. It's bad to be enslaved. It's bad to be uh, restricted. It's good to make good choices with your freedom. That's the important thing. They are suffering the consequences of a system that allows for slavery for donkeys that can talk. So that's bad. It doesn't mean that freedom is bad. And then in the spiritual sense, this also is a bad song. If this is some sort of spiritual metaphor, which is how the song seems to imply, not a biblical concept, though a, a controversial one among Christians, uh, I found. Freedom from the law. But by doing wrong, you condemned you yourself to death. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. Freedom, it is a bad thing, let me tell you. Freedom cannot be found. It should be ran from. Slavery is the only thing that is worthwhile in this world. You thought you were free when you decided to be a glutton. You thought you were free when you decided to do a little bit of gossip. You thought you were free when you decided to go and hang out with your friends. Well, guess what? All that got you was fat. Losing your friends. Now I'm here to tell you, you want to be enslaved. And that's the only way. It's, it's one or the other. You can be slaves or you can be a glutton. What? Never listen to your friends, only listen to the voice inside your head. A good piece of advice, only listen to the little tiny voice inside your head, especially if that voice is telling you to send your friends into the Coliseum. I know it seems pretty hopeless. Maybe Rupert will figure a way to get us out of here. I wouldn't count If he it. doesn't, nobody's even gonna know where we are. After several days Except of searching for, Mr. for Narrator. his brothers. <laughs> but he doesn't get involved. Except for sometimes. And I guess this just, this goes against his narrator code. Then we have another annoying scene with Rupert. But where's Ollie? I can't. What do you mean you can't? You can if you want. No, I said I can't. I can't. You could tell me I'm a doctor. Just tell me where Ollie is. Is this some type of riddle? Because if it is. And that's the truth of it. I just don't know. Huh? I really, really don't. I wish I did, but I- Ah, uh, just tell him. Just tell him the thing. It's such a long episode. So I thought they'd hightailed it out of there. Whoa. I tried to track them down <laughs> and couldn't. I figured maybe they were back here. Why would they be back here, Rupert? Well, I've got to tell Alondra I need the pack. Where are you going? We're both going to find Ollie. I just told you, I couldn't find him. Well, when you really need to find something, you go back to the start and search really, really hard. Oh, that's the problem. So let's go back to where you lost them and see if we can come up with any clues. Mm. Mm. Jehu and Rupert leave for the farm where Rupert last saw Ollie. Rawr. But miles away at the coast in the city of Caesarea, Ollie, Whipper, and Isa, Esau, and Jeremy are loaded on the boat for the Circus Maximus in Rome. There could be no help for them, or any of the other animals aboard the ship. How many times have we seen Donkey Ali and his friends get kidnapped and taken away to somewhere else? At least three, but I think four. It's a bit cyclical is what I'm saying, though hopefully all will be forgiven when we see the amazing action and adventure that comes out of the episode that has the Colosseum Circus. Unfortunately, we don't get to that today. No! That's right, we get interrupted by uh, Farmer John's Corner. That's the end of the episode at random today. I could feel it coming, but I didn't want to believe it. I am looking forward to that circus uh, Roman Coliseum episode. I want to see Donkey Ali in a situation where he's like, My name is Donkey Ali, father to a murdered wife, husband to a murdered son, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. And then uh, they're like, well, You could talk? Well, my goodness. Anyway, maybe Farmer John's Corner won't be so bad this time. Let's check it out. You know, sometimes I get mad at a friend or I get frustrated with something they do. You seem the type. There's not much I can do about it without making the situation worse, so I just come out here and sit down and relax and <laughs> play with clay. Is that clay? Oh, it's clay. Now, 
This is a special kind. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to get too excited. I just I lately have been uh, playing around with a little stop motion. I'm. It's not good. I will. I will not play any of it. Uh, but I did make this little um panda bear. Now, the thing to do is to start with kind of an egg shape and you sort of roll it around in your okay, hands. Okay, like okay, okay. I'll get, I'll get my get clay. Get sort of a bodily shape and then carefully taking a knife and asking your parents or whoever is nearby to help uh, cut the clay so with. Ask your parents or whoever's nearby. We can make All right, eggs okay. on him. All right. And then I got to my knife and make another leg. Hold on, hold on. Oh, my hands now are all we black. Have all the legs on, and clay. the next thing will be to put the head on him. Okay. And we'll start building Swoop. that with a little ball of. Hold oh, on. hello, Miss Bridget. Hello, oh, Farmer Duck. The... What are you building? The Great Pyramid of Giza. My goodness. My goodness, <laughs> that's terrible. That's way too tall. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm getting the head a bit roughed out here. All right, TMI there. <laughs> well, I've got the head and the body pretty well blocked oh, out. Dang it. The next thing would be to put on the Mine ears. Mine looks nothing like and that. And I'll do that by taking Clarence here and uh, poking little holes on Clarence the Thomas there. side of the oh. head. And forming ears out of a piece of clay. And Mr. Shivers, what are you doing here? It makes it better <laughs> here now. What the f What's what? wrong with this guy? I hate Mr. Shivers. Thank you. All right, I'm trying to follow along, but it's it's not turning out so well. Hold on, I need to. Yeah, that's coming along. He's got nice way more than I've had time to get. Well, hello, Mr. Budinski. Hi. I'll use a pen. Big time. So, Mr. Budinsky, what are you making? A scale model. The, mine looks more like a reindeer, I think. Uh, and also, mine looks uh, awful. Now, the final touches, I'll put a nice big smile on his face. Nose holes, nostrils they call them. They do, don't and they? And he's done. Humans call them nostrils. Well, I can keep this, I could put it on a shelf, or there. I could reuse the clay. I did it. What? What the? Haha, <laughs> sweet. Oh, come on, guys. What's wrong with you guys? Okay, fine. Let's use the undo button. I think I'll go put him on a shelf. <laughs> See you later. Still, how on earth did he do that? How did he do that? Can I borrow your undo button? Oh, thank you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another Spooky Night episode and another wonderful episode of Donkey Ali. Boy, did we have a good time here today. Not a big fan of that episode. Another kind of filler episode, a lot of floundering. And not very creative. Another kidnapping, another being taken to another land. Last time it was Egypt, this time it's Rome. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the circus and the Colosseum. Other than that, uh, disappointing episode. Plenty spooky, and uh, there you go. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you uh, so wish to do. I would love for you to do that, um, but if not, uh, obviously don't do it unless you truly mean it. That's the important thing. And uh, I will see you guys next time. I don't know when my next video is going to be, but it will be a good one and a one that I'm passionate about and that I love because that's the important thing. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Good night.